You're watching Day 9 TV, where you learn to be a better gamer. Hello, I'm Day 9 from Day 9 TV. And I'm Rob Simpson from Blizzard Entertainment. And it is time for another Heart of the Swarm StarCraft II Battle Report, where we're going to get the chance to see the Terran versus Protoss matchup in action. That's right, and this map that we're going to be watching it on today is Eternal Scar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to let you know, this is an alpha build of the game, so not everything you see here is final, even as far as the units in the game and the balance. That said, it's still largely the StarCraft you know and love, mm -hmm. with this map looking very similar to many of the other popular ladder maps. You have a natural expansion with a full set of resources, the thin ramp to defend your main, but most notably, it's pretty difficult to defend your expansion at the start. You have this wide entrance uh, at the front. You also have this back door collapsible rock tower for a second entrance. That's right. Now over here, if you destroy that collapsible rock tower and get rid of that 500 HP, it is going to drop some collapsible rock debris so that you can block off that entrance into the base, but now you can destroy it later in the game to make it up into this third. And that's going to be an important technique, to kill the collapsible rock towers early, block yourself off, and then kill th those rocks off again to take the third. But the third itself does have this big, vulnerable, wide ramp. There even is a, an attack path behind with a cliff where you can plant stalkers, tanks, ranged units, etc. Rob. That's right, and so you're going to be able to harass from there. Now we have, moving up into this upper right-hand corner of the base, we've got a small ramp that moves up into yet another expansion with a big ramp to get in the side there. It's a base that's relatively hard to hold. Yeah, it's kind of unclear who's supposed to take that one because, honestly, it's about equidistant from both players. Another interesting formation is this Zelnaga Tower that, again, has these collapsible rock towers. So a player can seize the tower, kill off the rock, locking that unit up there with the tower, getting some semi-permanent vision in the early game until the destructible debris are removed. That's right, and if you even just have a couple units up there, it's going to give your opponent hell when they try taking down those destructible rocks. And now out here in the center of the battlefield, we see that it's pretty large. We've got a shrubbery to control some of that line of sight. And over here, we have the high-yield mineral base. Yeah, the high-yield mineral certainly the most vulnerable expo on the map, but also the most rewarding. And over here, we see the Protoss player getting in for a little bit of vision. We do see that our Terran player has begun his orbital command just as he also drops down his command center. Wow. Now, over here on the Protoss side, he has opened with Mothership Core first, followed up by a Nexus. Yeah, both players early expanding, and the Protoss going for that brand new Protoss unit, the Mothership Core. It's tied to a Nexus. It cannot move away from it. It has the following abilities. Energize recharges the energy of any unit. Purify turns the Mothership Core temporarily into a 60 damage per shot cannon with range 13. And its final ability is Mass Recall. For 150 energy, you can recall a set of units from across the map back to safety at your Nexus. And of course, if you're familiar with Recall from the regular Mothership, the Mothership Core actually turns into the Mothership in Heart of the Swarm, hence why they share that ability. Also, the Mothership Core can transfer from one Nexus to the other, so it's a very easy way to expand, transfer the Mothership Core to your expansion, and rely on that Purify ability, that 60 damage a shot cannon for that defense. And over here we've got the Protoss player once again just continuing on with his pro production, and he also now has two gateways out, just about to finish up over there. It looks like Terran also going for a pretty typical early expand. This is the classic early expand, one barracks instantly taking the orbital command, but wow, oh. a really early third gas as we already see two geysers down in the main. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see where our Terran player is going to go from here. Now back over in the Protoss side of things, we do have the Cybernetic score just about halfway finished up over here, and we've got him adding on his second assimilator. Yeah, there's a little bit more economic focus that you can have in the early game as a Protoss player, thanks to that Mothership Core's ability to warp from Nexus to Nexus. But look at the distance from that Nexus to the ramp. And over here we've got the Terran player. He's starting to destroy that collapsible rock tower to block off the back of his natural expansion. He's also yeah. just started his factory as well as a tech lab, so we could see some really early harassment here. And there we have it. The collapsible rock tower turning into the debris and blocking off that path. That's such an important move for Terran to have made. He now knows that he needs only the bunker at the front. And wow, look at that Terran player going for the double factory mm. tech. Really excited to see him build those two factories as most of the new units and new abilities for Terran are based on that factory tech. Mm -hmm. And now we've got him moving over that racks and throwing down a reactor. Almost certainly going to see him bringing out those Hellions pretty soon. And now the Protoss player is getting a little active on the map. We see a couple stalkers as well as a zealot beginning on their 
first attack across the map. Now to note, uh, the, the Protoss new units tend to be Stargate focused, obviously with the exception of the Mothership Core. But what this means is that for the most part, Protoss is going to be looking real similar to Wings of Liberty until that Stargate pops out. And for now, we're seeing a sort of classic move from Protoss, going for the early attack with the warp in pylon, mm -hmm. but also taking out these collapsible rock towers to ensure that he can have that Zelnaga watchtower at the south. Well, that's right. That pylon is going to be so safe up there, and he's going to have the vision control as well. Oh, and now we have the Terran player. He's forced to pull off some of his SCVs here to try to defend from this. Oh, but Whoa. the Protoss player goes straight to run by, but the tank is already out, and we can oh, see the Protoss no. units are in a rough spot. Oh, Protoss doing a little bit of a risky move, moving in, but gets completely trapped oh. and recalls right on out again. You know, I'm, I'm not sure Protoss wanted that to be the outcome. You saw him skirt north. He was probably going to try to retreat along that collapsible rock tower path, but Terran knocked that out early, locking him in, and he was forced to use that recall ability to pull all of his units back home. Yeah, and it's just so much energy to get that out there. Now we can see the Protoss player finishing up his Stargate. He's also got a Robo on the way, as well as three additional gateways just as he starts his forge, and now we can see the Oracle production. Oh, the Oracle? I mean, we're going to be able to go in-depth on that in a moment, but still, note that that Oracle is an amazing harassment unit. Meanwhile, we see that that Mothership Core just transferred to the Nexus, a couple of sentries at the front. <laughs> it looks like, wow, the, uh, the Battle Hellions already taking out the destructible debris at the back door. Mm-hmm, because our Terran player is getting ready to expand up to that third. We have his third command center on the way. He's also just started his armory. Now there's only a little more HP remaining on those rocks, preventing him from taking that third. So he's almost there. And over here, we've got the Protoss player deciding he wants both of the Zelnaga watchtowers. I mean, this is a really excellent move for Protoss to make. In the mid game, the Terran can't necessarily move out. I mean, he needs a lot of tanks or he needs, if he's going, you know, Marine Marauder, he can get a whole bunch of medevacs or stim. But until that point in time, Protoss has total control and a great move to take the watchtowers. And now he's got this Oracle moving around the right side of the map, almost certainly going to get in there for quite a lot of economic damage onto his wow, opponent. On now, base. he did use Energize on that Oracle. That's why it had full energy so quickly. Yep, that Mothership Core's ability, and it looks like, oh, he entombs all of the mineral fields. Whoa. That is one of the big abilities of the Oracle, is the ability uh, oh, to just lock down. Oh, and he gets the main two. Oh, Jeez. and you can just see the income absolutely plummet for the Terran player, although he is relatively quick to respond over there, peeling off those mineral shields one at a time with his workers. And now the Zelnaga Watchtower helped him quite a bit. Wow. There was a small harassment that headed over for the third, but because the Protoss had that Zelnaga Watchtower, he was able to defend it in time. Now, we're seeing the Terran player burrow widow mines around the nearby area. It looks like oh. the Oracle again sweeps in, gets the entomb. That widow mine was unable to latch, latch onto that Oracle. It just barely wasn't in range. Now, that time we saw that the Terran player was very quick to respond. He was able to get off those mineral mm -hmm. shields mm -hmm. in a quick fashion, preventing maximum income damage. In the meantime, over in the Protoss camp, we just see a lot of gateways going down in the production tab. You see the two forges upgrading 1-1, one, one, almost certain to start 2-2 two, two in a moment. Fleet Beacon also going down. Looks like we might even see the, uh, the brand new air unit for Protoss, the Tempest coming up. But I think something that we haven't talked too much about is the fact that the Terran player is going for a mech play. Oh, oh, the oh no! gets caught by the Widow Mine. It is only a matter of time until it is out of here. Oh, and there we have it. Destroyed. I mean, let's let's talk a little bit mm -hmm. about the Widow Mine. That is a brand new unit. Uh, can latch on to anything. The Warhound, also a new mech unit that's essentially like the Goliath from StarCraft Brood War, or actually in StarCraft Two: Wings of Liberty, single player it was there. It's just a good all-purpose damage dealing unit that has a Haywire missile mm -hmm. for bonus mechanical damage. That's right, and so Warhounds are just so good at breaking those siege lines or fighting any of those mechanical units because of how much extra damage it adds to them. And now we see the Terran player, he's adding on more Widow Mines. We have a second Stargate coming out for him, and we've got a Tempest in production. Also, his third is beautifully saturated. Oh, yeah. I mean, Protoss is in an excellent condition right now, getting just everything he could possibly need at this point. Now, to note, um, the Terran player is moving along that south side of the map. It looks like he's going for the third base, and he's doing this unusual mech composition boosted by those battle mode Hellions. There we see oh. the Warhound starting to advance forward, and we see an oh, excellent show. Oh, and he's got blue flame there as oh. well, just frying through those zealots as the siege tanks try to do what they can to help this battle. Oh, man, and the Protoss is forced to retreat. 
Oh, it looks like Protoss oh. may very well lose this expansion. And there's that nice shot from those Haywire missiles doing bonus damage to Mechanical. That would be those Immortals and those Stalkers. But it looks like the Protoss unit count might be a oh. little bit too high. But he transfers the Mothership mm -hmm. Core for that defense. Look at that just stunning range on the Mothership Core, equivalent to a Siege Tank, able to narrowly defend. Yeah, that Purify is just so strong when you're trying to break through one of the Protoss' base. Fortunately, he had enough energy to handle that. And now we have the Terran player going out here for a bit of a risk trying to secure that center high yield mineral base. Oh, and I mean, just like in Wings of Liberty, Mech is immobile. One of the most immobile unit compositions, largely because tanks have to attach themselves to the ground, Rob, and you can't move while you're doing that. So it looks like the Terran player is retreating back. Oh, Protoss runs into some of those units, but you know, those Warhounds are serving the excellent purpose of just making things a little more mobile. Oh, now we've got a bit of harassment moving up here into the third as those Zealots are able to get just a couple SCV kills. Now, where the Terran player is right now at that high yield is so good for him because he has that Marine place at the bottom Zell Naga Watchtower. He's able to kill anything that comes in from that side. And now we have the Tempest in play with its massive 22 damage range. Yeah, I mean, the Tempest is a really interesting unit. It doesn't actually deal damage super quickly, but with that 22 range, it outranges everything. It actually even outranges the observer mode on the screen. You can't quite see past it. We even see oh. one of those Widow Mines attaching to the Tempest as it's going to try to advance forward, maybe pick off some of these tanks, and look at how far away it can take out these oh, tanks. When combined with an observer, it can just be so strong. And now we have a couple of those Widow Mines. Oh, but they're just not close enough quite yet. But now we have a Widow Mine getting up a little bit closer. Oh, it's burrowing directly underneath, and he's not paying attention. Oh, gosh. The oh. Tempest hopefully will be able to take out another couple of units before its demise. And oh, and it's perfectly fine. He had just <laughs> enough to make it through that. Oh, but now a second Tempest has joined the party to crash through that siege line. It's really interesting. Mech, most notable for its immobility, is going to struggle dealing with these Tempests. It's going to force the Terran player to draw units forward to take it out. But the Protoss with a much more mobile Speed Zealot Stalker Immortal Mixture. Wow, three Tempests. I mean, we do see that it can one-shot these workers, but it's still the fire rate is just so slow on those Tempests. Oh, and moving up here now. He did destroy those destructible rocks. Now there's only three Ooh. Vikings in play. They're able to finish off what the Widow Mine started, taking down one of those Tempests, but there's just not too many units down here that are able to kill those Tempests. Gosh, while well, all this has been going on, we see the Protoss on the minimap is taking a fourth expansion down in the bottom left. The Terran player having four bases as well. But, I mean, the mech army really showing a, an interesting new dimension in Heart of the Swarm with the ability to incorporate those battle mode Hellions with those Vikings. Vikings oh. plus the, the Warhounds. Uh-oh, these Tempests look like they're out here all alone. We can see oh. that the Terran army is starting to move around the left side of the map as well. The Vikings have come in, and now the Viking count is just so oh, high. Oh, but he gets in the recall. That is an excellent, excellent play right there by the Protoss player, and this is certainly something that we're going to be seeing a lot more of. In uh, Heart of the Swarm, the Protoss getting almost seemingly over-aggressive, and what is he doing? He's going to lose it all, but he just warps right on back home, and then he's fine. That's right. It, it enables you to go into those situations that aren't very safe, right? Because you can literally go all the way into your opponent's base where you would normally be trapped, but now you can pull back the safety. And now the Terran player oh, is bringing oh, the party oh, to the Protoss. Man. Protoss didn't have any vision there. The tanks literally walk right up to the expansion. No siege mode yet. There's the siege mode. It's a little bit late, and we see the Protoss army starting to scoot up to that top side. There is the cloak going down. That Oracle does have another cloak ability along with it. It was only temporary as the Vikings annihilated it nearly instantly. And we we see the mech army with the battle oh. mode Hellions. Mm -hmm. Hellions can transform into a cone fire as opposed to the straight line fire of the original Hellions. It roasts the Zealots. The siege tanks clean up the remainder of the Stalkers. And and the also, Tempest, very important, also very important for those Hellions is that they get increased HP when they're in battle mode as well. So you sacrifice ah. some of that mobility. You sacrifice the long straight line that they're normally able to shoot in, but you trade for that cone and for increased survivability. And the Nexus is down, and the Terran's able to retreat. Oh, that survivability is so key, Rob. I mean, the fact that the Hellions have that little bit of extra life meant that they could take a little bit of extra damage, giving a few extra rounds of tank shots. Well, these are... <laughs> These tanks just decided to stay and clean up the assimilator, Rob. 
Few things are worse than leaving a Protoss with one open assimilator. We've got to get it out of there, because he was clearly going to start long-range mining. Uh-oh, the <laughs> final siege tank does fall, and now we have the Terran player taking the upper right expansion, moving up to his fifth base. And we see the Protoss also trying to swing around to the top side. Does he have blink? He does. He, pro he might have a mass recall. I don't know if he has enough energy for that at this point. But we see that giant blue blob also moving up to mid. The expansion's vulnerable. There's the blink. Ooh, a little bit of a dangerous blink. He's going to have to wait a, well, a few more seconds to be able to use it again. But he does manage to successfully take out the expansion. But he commits the zealots there, too. Ooh, he's oh. going to desperately need a mass recall. We also see in the center of the map some red units doing a little bit of damage. But this is the problem for Protoss right now. How does he get out? Oh, man, we have the zealots closing the gap. But there may be too many units here for him to get out of there. He uses the zealots as a bit of a distraction as the stalkers continue to retreat. But now the Tempest are caught out all by themselves as the Vikings continue on the chase. Oh my gosh, this is the longest amount of time it takes to kite a unit in the game. Shooting, running for 10 seconds, turning around, shooting again. We see more zealots reinforcing, and I do believe Terran overextended a little bit, too eager to kill off those extremely expensive Tempests. Oh. And now it looks like the small army of Stalker Tempest will be oh. able to take out this mech army as there is no more anti-air. Right, so there he is pulling back those Stalkers because the tanks are going to trade far too favorably for him to want to keep those Stalkers in battle. Why bother risking them when you can just use the Tempest to fish them off? But oh, the Tempests are just so far up now. Gosh, I mean, the Terran's macro is just impeccable in this game. He has so many units. We also see it looks like the Tempest continuing to just increase in numbers. An interesting unit to begin throwing into this mixture as they're just so effective at breaking those tank lines. They force your opponent to build so many Vikings. And as long as the Tempest aren't all out on their own, Protoss! Oh, wow. And so the Vikings are able to get in there, get one volley off, and pull back to safety. Now the Protoss player, uh -oh, uh -oh. oh no, his fourth is in trouble. Oh, the fourth base in trouble again. We see 11 High Templar morphing in right now. We'll likely uh, be going for those Archons. Down in the bottom left, this expansion is just getting ruined. And in comes the Protoss army trying to potentially, oh no, he's moving out towards the center of the map. He needs to protect his Tempest. Those have been his protectors. His saving grace as he gets into oh, any of these oh, engagements. Oh, he can oh, blink under. A he nice can blink shot. under. Can, will he blink? Yes, he does. He manages to pick off those Vikings, and suddenly the anti-air, the anti-tempest units for the Protoss. Oh, oh, looks like Protoss is moving into intercept. And in we come, these Archons now trying to get in there and break the line, but the siege tanks are set up and they are just demolishing that army. You can see the Warhounds Gosh. really go to work on those Stalkers too, and now the Tempest are just about all that remains. The Haywire missiles from those Warhounds just picking the Stalkers apart. The expansion's taking massive damage. The Mothership Core will fall if this Nexus, if this Nexus goes down, and bam, there she falls. Oh no, and now it's going to be really hard for our Protoss player to be able to fight back from this. He's got the Tempest out there, but they're busy trying to fight those Vikings, and now the killing blow is going to be delivered by this Terran player. Look at that army. The Terran player not mining at the gold, not mining at the top right, has to do some game-ending damage right here, right now, sweeping in. We oh. see plenty of Archons in production, but with those Warhounds reinforcing the tanks, what can he do? Yeah, and also we see that the Protoss player was at zero income here, and now he's going in for his final stand. Is he going to be able to break through? Oh, no, no the GG, the Terran wins. The brand new style of mech really showing some amazing form in Heart of the Swarm. Excited to see players now able to use the Marine Marauder medevac and the mech composition. The Tempest gave him a lot of trouble. We see <laughs> Protoss tried to attempt to mine from that top right, but wasn't enough. Well, we'll see next time. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this very special edition of a Heart of the Swarm Battle Report.